So today let's take a look at another collection of dodgy USB chargers. But of course because those videos are usually getting too long, let's take a look at just two pieces now. Let's take a look at those black ones in this episode. And those are basically USB phone chargers or basically chargers for any device which can be charged from a USB port and one of them has a European plug and one of them has an American plug. I have some USB test loads prepared and a dodgy travel adapter for this American one to be able to plug it in my socket. So let's begin with this one with an American plug and one USB port. Let's unwrap it so we can see the marking better. The input of it is a universal mains voltage, it's made in China of course, and the output is 5 volts 3 amps or 9 volts 2 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps. And one USB port and this marking on it. And so let's test it, let's plug my dodgy adapter in. Let's plug it in and no explosion. Let's try to measure the output voltage. It's 5 volts. Let's try to load it using my test load at 1 amp, 2 amps. And does it make 3 amps? 2.3 amps, 2.4 amps and the voltage drops a bit. 2.5 amps it drops significantly and it's already a too low voltage for a USB port now. Now it shuts down. So it's not really 3 amps at 5 volts. Let's switch it to 9 volts, 1 amp, 1.3 amps and the voltage goes down a little bit, 1.4, it goes down a lot, 1.5, it's just 8 volts, 1.6, just 7.6 volts, 1.7, just 7 volts, a completely useless voltage now. So it's also not 2 amps at 9 volts. And 12 volts, getting close to 1 amp, 1 amp, and the voltage goes down a lot. One point five, but the voltage drops too low. So one point five amps at 12 volts is also a lie. Let's try to run it for a bit longer. 5 volts, 2.4 amps, which is the highest current it can supply without the voltage dropping. Because at 2.5 it's already a bit too low. So it runs for one and a half hours and it doesn't fail but it's getting bloody hot. It's actually too hot to touch. It was really quite hot, but surprisingly the plastic wasn't melting. We have already seen a charger, which melted a little bit here. But now of course, let's take a look in it. Let's try to pry it open. And this one is actually not so easy to open. Most of those dodgy chargers are way too easy to open for safety. And it opens. Here is the board. It smells horribly, it was running extremely hot. So let's take a closer look at it. The mains comes in here. There is probably a fusible resistor, a bridge rectifier. The primary smoothing electrolytic capacitor. Here is the switching chip. Some snubber network made of a diode, a resistor and a capacitor. Some auxiliary capacitor. Couple tiny resistors, the main switching chip, which also contains a built in high voltage switching transistor, some other small resistors, the transformer, some interference capacitor, and this interference suppression capacitor, as usual, is not a safety class Y1 capacitor. It's just an ordinary 1 kilovolt capacitor. It should be a safety capacitor because it's connected between the primary and the secondary side and it's critical for safety. And here's the optocoupler behind it. The secondary rectification diode, which is quite tiny for 3 amps. And some tiny resistors, capacitors and some voltage reference probably and some chip communicating with the load, negotiating the voltage. And a couple of small resistors, capacitors. 
Those are probably in the voltage reference, in the voltage sensing circuitry, and on the other side of the board, no components. And the isolation distance between the primary and secondary side is quite nice. But this capacitor is dodgy and, of course, for the safety, the isolation between the windings inside of the transformer is critical. So let's make an autopsy of it. Well, of course, I forgot to show this secondary capacitor and the marking of the diode and the voltage reference, this switching chip. Now the marking should be visible and the optocoupler and the other chip for the negotiation. And then of course desoldering the transformer and the autopsy. And the transformer is out. And here is the board under it and it seems to have no connection to the pins of the transformer. So it has no auxiliary winding. Just the primary and the secondary. And here is the transformer with the secondary and the primary on this pin and this pin. And this pin is unused and this pin is probably just a connection between the halves of the primary because it's a split primary. One half of it is under the secondary and one is over it for better coupling, for less leakage inductance. So let's try to open it. Let's try to open the ferrite core. So let's try to open it using my hair dryer, which is a bit molten now because I'm using it for things I'm not supposed to use it for. And it opens. And here is the fright core of it with an air gap in the middle because it's a flyback switching power supply. Now let's disassemble the windings. There is some sticky tape isolation on top of it. And here is the first half of the primary. And here it seems to keep some distance from the terminals of the secondary. There is some distance here and some sticky tape and also some isolation here and some distance here. Even though it seems like the isolation is slightly melting here maybe. But it seems to be isolated so far. Now let's remove the primary, the first half of it. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two turns. And then the isolation. A sticky tape, one layer, two layers and the secondary. And here are the terminals of the secondary and it seems to be made of two wires in parallel, which are wound quite weirdly. It all starts from the center and one wire actually ends on top of it and one ends at the bottom of it. But as always, in those dodgy transformers, the secondary is getting very close to the ends of the primary here. Here are the terminals of the primary and the secondary is very close to it, nearly touching it here and probably also here. I don't really like this. It looks quite questionable here and also here. Let's remove the secondary. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven turns. And another layer of isolation with those ends of the primary completely sticking out here and even more here. One layer. The U layers and the other half of the primary. One, two, three, sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Let's measure the diameters for those who are interested. That's the transformer. So let's sum it up. The isolation distance on the board is nice. It didn't fail after one and a half hour of operation. They put some isolation into the transformer, unlike the dodgiest ones with no isolation between the windings except the lacquer on the wire. It has the fast charging function, but on the other hand it can't supply the rated current, just about 80% of it. 
The capacitor between the primary and the secondary side is not a safety capacitor. And the ends of the primary were sticking out next to the secondary. So the conclusion is... Dodgy. And now of course time for this European charger with one USB port. Let's unwrap it and let's take a look at it. And it's quite similar to the other charger. I was already opening but it has a different color and it seems to have a different model number. So I guess the internals are probably going to be different. But now let's try to power it. Let's plug it in. Let's measure the voltage. 5 volts. Let's try to load it. 1 amp is fine. 2 amps fine. 3 amps. It's rated maximum at 5 volts. And does it go any further? It seems to go all the way to 3.8 amps. Then it's dropping. And now let's try 9 volts. 1 amp fine. 2 amps, it's rated maximum current and the voltage is fine. And it goes to about 2.2 amps and then it's dropping. And 12 volts. 1 amp fine. 1.6 amps, it's rated maximum current and it's still fine. And let's go further. 1.7 and it's dropping. So this one can actually supply its rated maximum current. But let's try to load it a bit longer at its maximum current. And after just 12 minutes of operation, it seems to have problems. It's cycling on and off and there is probably some overheat protection kicking in and it's extremely hot and it smells. It's actually even hotter than the previous one. But the previous one was running for one and a half hours. This one runs for 12 minutes and it's already extremely hot. And at 9 volts. And it also can't supply its rated current anymore. And 12 volts. Also cycling. At 5 volts, 2.3 amps, it seems to run normally. Well, not normally, it runs extremely hot, but it doesn't cycle. But it cycles at 2.4 amps. It's rubbish and now, of course, there's time to cut it open or pry it open. It's usually easier to cut a slot in it and then pry it. And that's it. I opened it and a puff of horrible burned smell came out. And now let's remove the board and that's it. And it's a different construction from the previous one. The previous one is on a double-sided board with components on just one side of it. But this one is a single-sided board with components on both sides of it. But the circuitry is probably similar. The mains comes in here, there is a fusible resistor probably, but no interference filter, just like in the other one. The primary smoothing electrolytic capacitor, some auxiliary electrolytic capacitor on the primary side. The primary switching chip, which is through hole in this one. Some small capacitor here, the transformer. Some dodgy interference capacitor probably, as always. And on the secondary side, the rectification diode, which is through hole here. And the optocoupler. And the secondary capacitors, two in parallel and the port. And from the other side of it, you can see that the isolation distance is not that bad. It's multiple millimeters. And here's the bridge rectifier. Some snubber network made of a diode, a resistor and the small capacitor on the other side. Some other resistor and a couple more resistors, capacitors on the primary side and on the secondary side. This main rectification diode and some resistors, capacitors and the chip for communication with the device and negotiation of the voltage and the voltage reference, sensing the output voltage. And as you can see, the solder joints of the main diode on the secondary side 
are horrible and this one definitely seems like it's failing. And the diode was probably running so hot that maybe the solder was almost liquid in operation. It's trying to self desolder and this solder joint would probably fail completely. The diode was just overheating and the soldering is also horrible here. And also this pin of this capacitor on the secondary side has a poor solder joint. And this interference suppression capacitor between the primary and the secondary side is rated 2 kV instead of just 1 kV, but it's still not a safety class Y1 capacitor. Is the marking visible? And the marking of those secondary side chips, and of course this one is a 431 voltage reference. And the primary chip and the optocoupler. And those pins of the transformer are the secondary and those ones are the primary. And there is a third pin, which doesn't make much sense. Well, this one is the positive of the rectified mains. This one goes to the switching chip and this one goes to the negative of the rectified mains. But it probably doesn't go to any winding. It probably goes to some interference shield in the transformer. Or maybe just to some unused pin. And of course the marking of the secondary capacitors and the secondary diode. And the primary capacitors, the bigger one is 400 volts 10 micro. But now of course let's desolder and open the transformer. And as you can see the negative of the rectified mains is going to an unused pin for completely no reason. Maybe the transformer was meant to have some interference shield in it but they omitted it probably. So the freight core with an air gap is open now and here's the rest of the transformer with some isolation. So let's remove it and here is some winding, a thick one, probably the secondary. So here's the secondary, which seems to be a high frequency cable made of twisted wires, multiple thinner twisted wires and the secondary is quite close to this end of the primary but not touching it. And this one doesn't have the split primary. There is just this secondary and the primary is entirely under it. No section of primary is over the secondary. And of course a close-up of this area where the secondary is close to the end of the primary. But it doesn't seem to be touching it. Even though of course the distance is barely one millimeter. And the secondary is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns. And here is the isolation under it which doesn't seem to have any gaps but the ends of the primary are sticking out from it. One layer, two layers, and the primary. One, two, three, four, nine titerns. And here is the transformer. So let's sum it up. The isolation distance on the board is nice. This interference capacitor between the primary and the secondary side is rated for 2 kV, not just one. There is some hopefully fusible resistor. And the isolation in the transformer is a bit better. The primary and the secondary are not touching. And it was able to supply its rated current momentarily. But unfortunately it wasn't able to supply this current continuously. The interference capacitor is not a safety class Y1 capacitor. There is no interference filter. The isolation distance in the transformer could still be better. And it was overheating horribly. The secondary diode was so hot it was probably melting its solder joint. And also the protection, the overheat protection in the primary chip was probably tripping. The chip is probably originally meant for a lower power. But I couldn't find any data sheet of it. But anyway, the conclusion is... Dodgy! So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course you can also become my patron to support my channel and get early videos. The link to my Patreon is in the description as well as the link to my Instagram. And of course even more chargers are coming. 
Maybe some stupid dodgy one and maybe some nice one.